this is Kim with Mom's Creative Moments and today I am bringing, a, bringing you a project recipe for a, another vintage um, collection but I'm not using the vintage collection to create it because I simply don't have it anymore but it was for a collection called Storytime that came out a few years ago and today we're going to use our National Scrapbook Day papers to put together that project recipe. I think you're really going to like it. I think it's going to turn out really nice. So I hope you'll join me and let's check out my workspace and we'll get started. Okay, so here is my workspace for today. And um, as you can see, we are again using papers that are not exactly what we're uh, what are called on for our project recipe. We're going to do use the Storytime project recipe and Storytime is a collection that came out in 2019 and I do not have any more of it um, because we got it so long ago. But I wanted to share with you the cool project recipe um, that goes along with it and so I decided to use our um, what I had left of my National Scrapbook Day um, papers and kind of coordinate a few things with that um, to create the story time layout. So um, hopefully you will enjoy this. I think it should turn out very cute and I'm looking forward to um, using some summer photos on this layout. So um, I have my citrus slice border maker punch right out here. As you can see, there is a border maker that's used, a border that is punched and used on this layout. And you can use, um, you could use the citrus punch border maker um, to create that layout right there. Or if you have some of your laser borders from the National Scrapbook Day collection, if you're following along and doing exactly what I'm doing, you could use a laser border for um, for this particular um, portion. So let's go ahead and um, take a look at what we need to cut, okay? So first of all, I'm gonna go ahead and move my um, border maker to the side and get my adhesive out of the way as well. And then we'll talk a little bit more about what I have here on my desktop. Okay, so first of all, I have two pieces of green cardstock. This is not the typical green that we have available online. This is marsh green cardstock that was um, put out by CM um, quite a bit ago. Let me see if, I, if there's a date on here. Oh, it came out in 2021, so it was probably part of a cardstock buffet um, that I got this from. So if you have that on hand, I feel like it matches really nicely with the tone-on-tone -tone paper and the greens that are in the um, this one with the lemon and limes on it. <clears throat> we also have the opposite side of these two. I don't know if we'll use that side or not. Um, it does say that we're going to use a reverse portion of a couple of papers, so um, we may go ahead and use a portion of these back sides, but it won't be very much, just for accent. So, um, so yeah, let me see here. I need... I'm going to go ahead and remove my base pages. And we'll get back to those when it's time to assemble. So let's go ahead and jump over here to our um, our designer papers. And I'm noticing that actually I need one more piece of paper. I need an accent cardstock. So let me get maybe a dark green um, cardstock out, and because I think that that will work nicely with this collection. So give me just a second. Okay, so here is our dark green cardstock, which is also going to get cut and used um, in place of the navy cardstock down here. So we're going to need a piece 
um, two pieces of designer paper. One should be tone on tone, one should be designer. So that's why I have a tone on tone and a designer out here. I just happen to have these left. And I was very glad that this would work because I think it will be, it will make a very cute uh, layout. So let me go ahead and grab my trimmer and we'll get started trimming these up. And um, let's go ahead and start with, I'm gonna set these to the side. We're gonna start with our tone on tone paper, which is the green field right here. And you can see that we first need to cut a five and a half inch piece. And um, my paper, as you may have noticed, has slightly crinkled right here on the corner, but I'm not worried about that because I'm going to be cutting a flag into one end. So we'll just make that the end that we cut the flag in. So five and a half inches is the very edge of my trimmer. And I went ahead and just trimmed that off at five and a half by 12. So that piece is good to go. Then I'm gonna need a piece, two pieces that are one inch that we're going to trim smaller. So I'm gonna cut two one inch pieces over here and then we'll stack them, maybe. Let's see. No, we're not gonna stack them because they need to be two different measurements. So the first one needs to be 10 inches long. Let me grab my arm and stick this out. So the first one should be 10 inches long. So we'll set this on here, find the 10 inch mark. And trim that. So there's the first one. The second one needs to be nine and a half inches. So we're gonna go with nine and a half inches on this second one. These pieces are extra. All right, then we're going to take the remainder of our paper, which should be at four and a half inches. Let's just double check. Yep, four and a half inches. And we're going to cut it at six and a half inches. So I'm gonna lean my arm out for the six and a half mark. All right, and I'm sure that that is a mat, so we'll set that up there. And then we need a piece that is one and a half inches. So I'm gonna use my one and a half measure on the right hand side over here so that I can put the balance of my paper against the shoulder up there and keep it nice and straight. So we're gonna have one and a half inch by four and a half inch piece and set that down there. We're gonna actually use the reverse side of that so it'll look like that. And actually we're using the reverse sides of these two strips as well. So I'll just flip those over to remind myself to use the reverse side. This piece is extra, so are these two little strips. So I'll go ahead and set those aside. Now we're gonna get our piece with all the lemons and limes all over it. This is going to be represented by the peach field and our cutting guy. And so we're going to again cut a piece that is five and a half. And because I have that small crunched corner, I'm gonna use that so that I can trim that off. So five and a half inches by 12, there's that piece. Then I again need two one inch pieces, one inch wide, which we will trim. So there's one. And here is two. All right, then they need to be one by 10 and one by nine and a half, just like <clears throat> for our other piece of paper. So we're gonna go one by 10. And one by nine and a half. Okay, then 
I need to use the balance of this and make a six and a half inch piece. So just the same size as before, as we did with our tone on tone paper. So there's a second mat. And then I'm going to use the, the remainder of this and cut it again at one and a half inches. So we're cutting both our tone on tone and our designer paper in the same increments. And then we've got the same pieces left over. Now we need to cut our cardstock. We're going to use our cardstock. If you're going to punch a border, we're going to punch a border from the cardstock. So um, you will want to take a minute and use your citrus border to go ahead and punch that out. Um, and I can show you how that's done in just a minute. But I, I am not going to use a punched border on mine. I'm going to use some laser borders, I believe. So I am not going to, um, not going to worry about punching both of those. We'll see. Um, for now, I'm going to go ahead and cut these other mats that are here. So I need a piece that is four and a half inches. And one more that is four and a half inches. All right, and then I'm going to stack those. I'm going to cut at six and a half inches. So I'm going to move my arm back out again to six and a half inches. Making sure my cardstock stays together. So six and a half. And then I'm going to cut one more at four and a half to make a four and a half by four and a half square. Two four and a half by four and a half squares, since I've got these stacked together. All right. So we're done with our trimmer for now. And I'm going to grab my CM scissors. I'm also going to grab my two pieces, which are um, fairly large and wide. Remember with the ones with the crinkled corner. Okay, so I'm going to use the corner that I want to cut. I'm going to take it, I'm going to fold my corner points together. I'm not going to crease it, I'm just going to place those points together. All right. I'm going to hold the side that's not folded so that I can hold that paper right where it needs to stay. Then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut from the point right here where the two points come together and I'm going to cut in about looks like it's about an inch, maybe an inch and a half. So I'm going to imagine we're about an inch, maybe that's more, gonna be more like an inch and a quarter. Yeah, about an inch and a quarter is what I'm cutting for mine. Okay, so that's gonna be my flag. And just so that I make a similar cut on this one, I'm going to, on the wrong side, so this is not the side that I want to show, this is the side that I want, that I'm going to cut on. I'm just going to make a little tiny dot with a pen so that I can make sure I see it right there. And I'm going to fold this so that I can see the dot. Okay, so this is not the side of the paper that we're going to see on our layout, but this is the side I'm going to cut so that I can see that dot and I have a target. Okay, so I'm cutting from the point to the dot so that my angles are similar. And I missed it by that much, just a teeny bit, but that's okay. 
I don't think we'll notice. All right, so good to go there. Now I'm gonna show you how to punch the citrus border in case you want to use that. So you just slide your paper all the way in to the edge of the guide. The guide folds back underneath the punch. And we can create a very cute line of dark green limes. And I don't know, maybe we will use this, we'll see. I'm gonna punch the other side of this so that I have enough to hold with the magnet. Although if I didn't, I could just use post-it notes. You've seen that, me do that trick before. We're just gonna punch it again. And then we'll trim it and cut it apart. All right. I think I may have said we were done with our trimmer. I lied. I'm sorry, ladies. Okay, so we are going to need our trimmer one more time. And we're just going to trim this up a little ways. Let's see. Knowing that this is a chain border maker cartridge they used here, and we are not using a chain with this one, Chains are usually about an inch high, but an inch high with this particular one is going to give us much too much room underneath it. Um, however, we could use that as a journal space, so maybe I will go ahead and just give it an inch, and that way I can write on this and make it journaling space if I'm going to use it. The jury's still out. I have not decided because I really would like to use my laser borders. But we'll see. Maybe I can figure out a way to use both. All right, so that is an extra piece. Gonna go over there. We've got these. Done with our trimmer, I promise. This time around, we are done with the trimmer. Okay, now I'm gonna grab my base sheets and we're gonna get started putting this together. So here are the base sheets, and we grab our pieces so we can spread out here just a tad bit. So I'm going to set that over there so you can see it. We've got this over here so I can work with it. Now, we are going to have <clears throat> one piece up here and one piece down below so we could have this like this or if you like this side better you could use that side in which case, I think I would go with this. And then we're not using the tone on tone, so just keep, keep in mind that we'll need to make some adjustments. But I almost think I like that better because it gives us all these beautiful lemons up here. What do you think? Like that, should we go more like this and flip it around like really a lot? We could do that. It's just ad <coughs> adjusting it. I think I like that best because I think these lemons need more of a base instead of having them kind of floating. You could even flip it around and have them go like this. But I don't like that as well because I don't like this side. 
this side looks right, but this side does not look right. So I think that we could go like this. Let's do that. Okay, so we're going to go like that. Then we're going to take our, oh, I need my scissors because we have a few more banners to cut. I didn't realize that. But each of these long pieces, not the short piece from each of them, but each of these four long pieces need to be cut into banners as well. So if you have the flag punch, you could use that really quickly. Or you can just use your scissors and create flags by folding. Again, don't crease the paper. Just fold it in and try to make them all as close to the same as possible. Since these are all one inch pieces of paper, one inch wide pieces of paper, you would I would go in about a quarter of an inch from the corner to the center. And let's see, let me collect all my little flag parts, get those put over there. All right, now, so since we have decided to use this side, we're going to use the tone on tone side for the flag. So I'm going to flip over the tone on tone side and we're going to use one long one and one short one for each side of our paper. So we're going to have the long one is going to go across the top and over here across the bottom and the short one I'm sorry I'm getting all confused okay so long one short one that's the short one long one so this one goes across the bottom over here. This one will go across the top over here. All right. I think I have my ducks in a row now. So we're going to take our long one, so the 10 inch one. We're going to put some repositionable adhesive. Remember, repositionable adhesive is your friend. And I have to replace mine because it's been so friendly. I've used it all. Okay, so let's get that replaced. Sometimes when I go to replace mine, I have this like little bit of little collection of like gummy substance right in there. It's like a little bit, little bit purple. So I just like to clean that out every time I replace my um, cartridge just like that, that little gumminess. I think it works much more efficiently when I do that. Um, all right, so this 10 inch piece with the flag on the end is gonna go right across the top of our cardstock. So right across the top. Then we're gonna take our big flag, the one that's five and a half inches, and we're going to use our repositionable adhesive on the, the actual flag portion down here so that we get those points. But then just grab your permanent adhesive and run down in little bits on the rest of it. This is going to go right up against our other flag edge to edge from left to right and and edge to edge on the flag that goes across the top here just like that okay then we're going to take the slightly shorter flag that we have grab your repositionable adhesive again and we're going to lay this flag over halfway over that seam so top flag and the large flag that's five and a half inches, this is going halfway over the seam. 
or as close to that as you can make it. I don't know what I did with my all-purpose tool. There it is. Okay, so it looks like I need to adjust mine just slightly because I was a little bit off. So I'm just going to pull that up and move it just a tad bit up. There we go, so that I'm happier with it. Perfect. Okay, now, now we're going to do the same thing down here on the lower part. So we're going to take our longer strip, which for me is this one with the little tiny blue suns on it. I'm going to use my reposition bullet adhesive and this is going to go right in the corner of my cardstock. Right along the bottom edge. Okay, then I'm going to take my beautiful lemon lime paper that we cut. I'm going to go ahead and add some repositionable again along that angle that we cut into it so we can make sure and get the point. Then this piece, just like the other one, is going to go right up against that flag we already adhered and the edge, the left edge and the right edge, or well, the right edge and the points on the left line up with the edge of our cardstock. Then we've got our tone on tone lime flag and it's going to go again halfway between covering up that seam just a little bit halfway. Okay. Now, according to our project recipe, what they've done is they've used their um, border that they punched and they've cut off a portion of it and placed the rest of it over this portion of um, of the flag that we've got here. My problem is that I don't really like that even though I would like to use that for journaling. So what I could do, I could we could use it anyway. Um, I have these laser borders that actually layer really nicely and you can put the green stripe over the lemon wedge and that looks really really nice. The problem is that I can only find one set of my laser borders so I only have the one and I would have to cut it at six inches which would only be about here and I think I want the border to go a little longer so what I might do is coordinate these two. Let's see is there some way that we could coordinate all of this and layer it up? Like so. Well, that doesn't look half bad. don't think I like the squared off edge here. I would need to do something to change that. What if what if I went ahead and made that look like a banner as well? Let's see. Okay. I'm going to try this and see if I like it. And if not, then we'll just take it off. 
Okay, so I'm going to use the top. Actually, I'm not going to use the top of that banner because I want to see more of that tone on tone paper since I don't have that um, as an option. So I'm going to just move, I moved this in about a half an inch. I cut a little flag into the end of my citrus punch. I'm going to go ahead and adhere these two to each other. Okay, now half of that is going to be straight through here. So I could have used my trimmer, but it's sometimes just easier to go ahead and cut it with scissors, which is what I did. Okay. Then we're going to just go ahead and add this. Oops, this is the one that will go on that side. This is the one that will go on this side. So that my cut edge goes along the outer edge of my layout. And I'm going to adhere this along the top of that. So this double laser border is adhered to the top of my tone on tone flag and I have the additional flag of my punched design below it. Let me just trim this off. This is a little bit of scrapbooking in real time for you today because I didn't really have an exact notion of how I was going to do this. So I apologize that it's a little on the fly, but sometimes we have to scrapbook like that. So I hope that you are in the spirit of all of that, able to join in that spirit, I guess this one. All right, so let me go ahead and adhere this piece. This is going to go the same way or a similar way here, but a little bit offset because I want it, I want that the middle of this flag on my punched piece is going to go with the top of my shorter ribbon. So um, hopefully you can see how that aligns. so and then we'll line this piece the laser borders up with the top of my page like so Okay, hmm. I wonder what's going on upstairs. All right, so now let's go ahead and get our mats on here where they need to go so that we can see how the pictures are gonna lay out. All right, so we've got the larger two mats are gonna go on the larger pieces here. Then we're going to have our larger solid cardstock mats are going to go towards the outside edge and the squares will go towards the inside edge. Ooh, liking that. I'm glad we used 
the dark green for that. Okay, and then these two pieces that we had cut are going to go next to They've cut some extra flags on our on our sample up here. That's interesting. So we're, this is going to go next to our um, mat, our largest mat. Okay, and they have theirs covering up mostly like this. But I'm going to scoot mine to the center because I want to see more of these lemons that are on the side here. So I'm going to move those in a bit and to accommodate and make it similar, I'm going to do the same thing down here on this side for balance. All right, then we can do some, uh, some um, embellishments over here. And I don't know, we might find one, one or two more places where we can put an embellishment, maybe here or here. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and get these mats down in place. And I am gonna go ahead and permanently adhere these. I'm putting about a quarter of an inch from the center and then just centering it between this top flag and the bottom edge of my paper. So make the go ahead and make that border between the picture mats equal to the border around the left and right. Just make the, the um, separation between the two, the separation here, the same as this one, if you can. Same thing on this side. Now, if you have any of your NSD embellishments packs um, left, these make perfect, um, perfect additions to your pages and can be super fun. Like you've got this, we've got this really cute lemon. You've got oh so squeezable. 
I'm sure you're familiar with all of these by now if you've been attending, a, if you've attended any National Scrapbook Day events, um, then you're familiar with the really cool um, embellishments that are a part of this pack. So this is nothing new, oh excuse me, and nothing new for you. Um, let's see here. Without knowing what pictures are going to go on here, it's hard to use the oh-so-squeezable, but I, li I love that. I think it's super cute. I also love this one with the sun on it. It just makes me happy. I use, I've used it before in other layouts, so, um, so yeah, it makes me happy. Let me grab my foam squares and... We'll get going on this part. Let's move this up here just a little so it's easier to see. All right, so I'm going to just put a foam square on the back of this sun. And that's going to go on here like so. We'll use Here Comes the Sun. Pop that up as well. Just kind of like that. Okay, let me get some adhesive on the back of this guy. And we'll just kind of do like, like that. Here comes the sun. Then down here we'll do um, let's do this guy and you make life sweeter. And we'll put sunshine and smiles in another spot. So bear with me here a second. Okay, make life sweeter. This is gonna go over here. And we need a little something, something to go with it. We could do our lemon and lime. I didn't put adhesive on the back of this one. Let me do that real quick. You make life sweeter. Then we'll stick this guy under there and this guy. Kind of coming off the side. And sunshine and smiles can be down here. With a, li a lime or a lemon? Hmm. I think it needs a lemon. What do you think? I think it needs a lemon. Okay, so we'll just add a little bit of adhesive to that. And that's going to go right here. 
so that we can still put a picture in there. All right, I believe we are good. Good to go unless we want to add a lemon up here or a lime, as it were. Maybe we should add a lime. We'll, pick, we'll stick a lime up there. I think that's a good idea. Who said that? Whoever you were, you were right. We need a lime up there. Okay, so we are good with embellishments. We are good with mats. I believe we are done. What do we think? So again, this is the story time project recipe that we inverted just a little bit, um, made a few adjustments to, um, just to accommodate the supplies I had on hand. So um, if you have you know all of these papers and you want to use the papers that they use because you have story time and you have this really cute punch which I also have but because this isn't a baby page I, co I coordinated my punch with my um, with my theme of my pages so um, at any rate though I think it turned out pretty cute and I'm excited to use some springtime and summer pages pictures on these pages. I think they'll be really, really darling. I hope that you have been inspired by participating in this with me and that you will use these tips and tricks to um, create some wonderful pages for, you, for your albums. Um, that is my goal and why I provide these things for you. So and until next time, until we meet again, I hope that you will have many more creative moments. Take care. Have a great day.